spectral shifts in easy way. Let us take a simple compound like this and this is the 1,3-butadiene structure. And if this 1,3-butadiene is going to be dissolved in a suitable solvent and then this solution is going to be placed in a spectrophotometer and if we send the electromagnetic radiation with the intensity I0 then this uh, electromagnetic radiation can pass through the solution and it can come out of the solution as the IT where the IT is the intensity of the transmitter light. So this solution can absorb the electromagnetic radiation because of the sample 13 butadiene. In this way if we plot the absorbance versus wavelength we can get a curve like this. And here we can observe a maximum absorbance at a particular wavelength and this wavelength is called as lambda max. So lambda max is the wavelength at which sample shows the maximum absorption. And sometimes this lambda max may be shifted to either higher values or lower values because of any structural changes in the compound or because of any other factors like the solvent. Any of these can produce some change in the lambda max value. These change in the lambda max value is what we call spectral shifts. For example, again let us take this 1,3-butadiene. The 1,3-butadiene is having a lambda max approximately at 270 nanometers. And if you take another compound like this, this is simply 135 hexatrain. This train has a lambda max approximately at 250 nanometer. So here what happened? The lambda max of the butadiene is 217, but the 135 hexatrain is 250. So here you can observe the lambda max value is going to be increased around by 33 nanometer. So the increase in the lambda max value is because of the introduction of a new double bond within the structure. So butadiene is having the two double bonds, but hexatrain is having three double bonds. And even this double bond is in a conjugated way. So here an extended conjugation can be observed in the 135 hexatrain. So by this the lambda max value is going to be increased. Similarly we can observe a number of unsaturated double bonds in view of these carotenoids. For example the lycopene which is present in the tomato as well as beta carotenes which are present in the carrot. These uh, carotenoids are having around 11 double bonds which are responsible for the higher absorption of the radiation by these compounds. If we see the lambda max of these carotenoids, lycopene shows a lambda max around 471 nanometer and carotene around 452 nanometer. Both of these are going to falling in the visible region. That's why lycopene and carotene are responsible for the color for the tomato and carrot respectively. So here again we can observe that by extended conjugation the lambda max value is going to be increased. In the 1,3-butadiene it is 270 nanometers but in these uh, compounds because of the more number of double bonds uh, the lambda max is uh, shifted from 270 nanometers to above 450 nanometers. Now in this video we will see what are these spectral shifts, what happens to this lambda max value and how the lambda max value either increased or decreased and what are the factors responsible for these spectral shifts. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends and post your comments in the comment box. Spectral shifts. So spectral shifts are the shift of the lambda max and this shift of the lambda max may be either to the higher values or to the lower values. So lambda max may be either increased or the lambda max may be either decreased. So here we can use the two terms in order to indicate uh, either increase or decrease in the lambda max. For example, bathochromic shift which is also called as red shift which indicates there is an increase in the lambda max. Similarly, hypsochromic shift is the blue shift where the lambda max is going to be decreased. So now we know that bathochromic shift is an increase in the lambda max but how it is going to be produced and how we can uh, study this bathochromic shift as well as hypsochromic shift. So in order to understand these spectral shifts first of all we have to see what is a ground and excited states. In atomic spectroscopy we can have a ground and excited state very clearly but in the molecular spectroscopy we cannot have a strictly defined uh, ground and excited states. 
and here the molecules will form few of the orbitals we call the molecular orbitals so we can study the ground and exit states in terms of molecular orbitals so suppose this is the two states and here this is the homo which can be considered as a ground state and this is the lumo which can be considered as exit state what is homo homo is the high energy occupied and here mo indicates molecular orbital so homo is the high energy occupied so this is the outer orbital which is having the highest energy and occupied with the electrons so this is called high energy occupied molecular orbital and what is lumo lumo is the low energy unoccupied molecular orbital so within a molecule we can have so many types of vacant molecular orbitals among these what is the lowest energy that means what is the first vacant orbital that is available for filling of the electrons that what we call the low energy molecular orbital electron is going to jump from the outer orbital to the next orbital the next orbital is nothing but the among the unoccupied the lowest energy so that is called low energy unoccupied molecular orbital so when we supply the energy the electron can jump from the homo to lumo by absorbing this energy so homo is just like the ground state and lumo is just like the exit state so this picture simply indicates an energy diagram the ground state is having the lower energy so it is at the bottom and exit state is having the more energy so it is at the top sometimes we can observe that either ground state or exit state may be stabilized so that we can see a change in the spectra and their lambda max values for example if the exit state is going to be stabilized the energy of the exit state is going to be reduced and now the gap between the homo and lumo is also reduced so here you can observe the gap between the homo and lumo is going to be decreased and sometimes the homo may be stabilized so that now the energy gap between the lumo and homo is going to be increased so here we can observe the gap is going to be increased so because of the stabilization of either exited state or ground state the lambda max values may be either increased or decreased now let us see which is responsible for the bathochromic shift whether the stabilization of the ground state or stabilization of the exited state so if we see the bathochromic shift let us take the two states here the homo and lumo and we can observe the energy gap between these two which can be written as delta e1 is equal to hc by lambda 1 so delta e1 is equal to h is the planck's constant and c is the velocity of the light in the vacuum by lambda 1 is the wavelength of absorption because of the bathochromic shift suppose this exit state is going to be stabilized then we can observe the energy gap is going to be reduced now you can see the here the energy gap is equal to delta e2 is equal to h c by lambda 2 if you compare the delta e1 and delta e2 which is more you can easily observe that delta e1 is greater than delta e2 then what happens to the lambda values so here we know one of the relation e is directly proportional to 1 by lambda that means the wavelength is always uh, inversely proportional to the energy so more the energy lower the wavelength of radiation so here as delta e1 is greater than delta e2 then we can write lambda 1 is less than lambda 2 that means the wavelength of absorption of the first case is less and in the second one the lambda value is going to be increased so here we can observe that the lambda value is going to be increased so there is an increase in the lambda max value so which indicates bathochromic shift otherwise this is also called as red shift so bathochromic shift is the increase in the lambda max because of the stabilization of the exited state now let us see why it is called as red shift now we know that bathochromic shift is the increase in the lambda max value and uh, it can be simply remembered as a red shift because we know the the different types of radiation in the visible region which can be indicated as vibgr so from the violet to the red color so if you observe that here the r is the red color so when we travel from the violet color to the red color we can observe there is an increase in the wavelengths so that's why bathochromic shift can be indicated as a red shift in the red shift the lambda max value is going to be increased and here you have to remember that this term bathochromic shift is starting with the letter b it should not be considered as the blue shift it is the red shift and here you can remember that 
B is not for B. That means bathochromic shift is not the blue shift. It is the red shift. Now let us see the hypsochromic shift. What is hypsochromic shift? This is quite opposite to the bathochromic shift. In the hypsochromic shift, we can observe a decrease in the lambda max value. Again, let us take the HOMO and LOMO and if we see the energy gap between these two, delta E1 is equal to HC by lambda 1. And now in this case, suppose if the ground state is stabilized, when the ground state is going to be stabilized, you can observe the energy is further reduced and now the energy gap between the HOMO and LOMO is somewhat increased, which can be indicated as delta E2. Delta E2 is equal to HC by lambda 2. Now which energy gap is more? Here you can easily observe that delta E1 is less than delta E2. Then what happens to the lambda value? Because the lambda is the inversely proportional to energy. So we can simply write that lambda 1 is greater than lambda 2. So that means in the second case, so lambda 2 value is somewhat less compared with the lambda 1. That means the here lambda max value is going to be reduced. So hypsochromic shift results in the decrease in the lambda max value because the ground state is going to be stabilized so that the energy gap between the HOMO and LOMO is going to be increased. Now let us see why it is called as blue shift. Hypsochromic shift is the shift of the lambda max to the lower values. So again we can observe in the VIBGR. Here you can observe the blue color and when we are going to travel from the red to blue wavelength is going to be reduced. So that's why this hypsochromic shift is called as blue shift. So in the blue shift, the lambda max value is going to be decreased. Now let us see another term related to these spectral shifts, hyperchromism. What is hyperchromism? In order to understand this concept very easily, let us take a practical example. Suppose you have $100 in your pocket. Now you want to buy an item which is having the price of around $50 then how many items you can buy with your hundred dollars in your pocket so here simply you can buy the two items because each item is having the fifty dollars and suppose if the item price is going to be reduced and the new price of the item is around ten dollars then how many items you can purchase simply you can purchase ten items so as the price is going to be reduced you can buy more number of items and your buying capacity is going to be increased so this is just similar to the, the absorption in the spectroscopy. As the energy gap between the HOMO and LUMO is going to be reduced, the electrons can undergo more transients, thereby the absorption of the radiation is going to be increased. Now if we see the energy gap between this HOMO and LUMO, here the energy gap is more. So more energy gap leads to the less electronic transients, so less radiation is going to be absorbed. But if the energy gap is going to be reduced, just like in the new price, where the price is going to be reduced, so that means the exit state is going to be stabilized and uh, the energy gap is going to be reduced, then you can see that less energy gap so that we can have the more electronic transients, thereby more absorption of the radiation. So as the energy gap between the HOMO and LOMO is reduced, the amount of the radiation that is going to be absorbed is increased which is indicated by hyperchromism. So hyperchromism is nothing but increase in the absorption capacity of the molecule. So you can easily observe that the bathochromic shift always linked with the hyperchromism. Whenever a bathochromic shift is going to take place, it also increases the, the capacity of the molecule to absorb. So hyperchromism is also increased. Now we can define this hyperchromism in terms of molar absorptivity, which is indicated by epsilon max. Molar absorptivity is the intrinsic capacity of a molecule to absorb the electromagnetic radiation. So hyperchromism is the increase in the epsilon max where the molar absorptivity is going to be increased. Similarly hypochromism is the decrease in the epsilon max which indicates there is a decreased molar absorptivity. So here you should not confuse with the hypochromism with the hypsochromism. Hypochromism is related with the reduced epsilon max, whereas hypsochromism is related with the reduced lambda max. And bathochromic shift is always linked with the hyperchromism and hypsochromic shift is always linked with the hypochromism.